Hello, all my lovely little cupcakes. How are we doing today? So, today's video is which we going to be about the first year of me coming out as transgender. My feelings, the way how I feel um, about family and friends, and about a number of other situations like how was I accepted in the LGBTQ plus community, and kind of what went on there. And I'm going to be talking a bit about transphobia and about relationships and dates and for how a lot of this has gone over the past year. So this is all going to be in a free, a free part video. Like if this is going to be a huge thing. So this is, this is part one in part two and three will be coming out in the next number of days part one as well on part one today i hope you really enjoy the video um this is going to be a very long video so i am sorry so for now uh, let's get cracking on with the video so we are going to start with family and friends so i would like to say that my family have been very accepting from the moment go so with my family, it's been a bit of a journey, to be honest, because from the beginning, it has been very much, it was very hard for them to understand what transgender and what I'm going to go through and what is going to happen next. From that point, they found it very hard with the change of name with my pronouns and stuff like that so they found it very hard at first to start calling me Charlotte instead of my birth name they found it a bit hard to change the pronouns around to he and she and etc so eventually over this past year it has changed very much for him and they've started getting used to calling me Charlotte, saying her and she and verifying me as a sister instead of obviously before it was brother so for them it's been very hard to understand and kind of change what they've always thought so for them it's been very much the hardest part for me that I felt is them trying to accept me in that such way instead of accepting me like yes i've came out as transgender now they accept that part but for me that wasn't the part that i really wanted or needed to be accepted i wanted to very much be accepted with the pronouns with my name change with calling me a sister and etc and it's taken um quite a while to get the head around that and start verifying and kind of see me in that such way where I understand that has been very hard for them and eventually now a year later that they have come around to the whole idea and they have started calling me she, her and hers and started calling me Charlotte and see me as a sister what makes me really happy so have I actually lost any family members due to the transition? No, I haven't. So for me, I, I do have a very big family, but I've only ever been very close to three members of my family. What are my two sisters and one brother that I've been very close to for many years now. And all three of them have been extremely accepting. Now, with my brother, with my sisters, they've been more open to the change. They've been more open to calling me Charlotte and using the pronouns and stuff. My sisters have. Where my brother, he is a little bit more, he's finding it a lot harder to grasp hold of to. He's finding it harder to understand a lot of it. Um, so, for me, it's not about pressuring pressure of people and it's not about pressure pressure them so much that they have to call me this and they have to do this and they have to do that because the moment that I start pressuring them 
the moment that they start losing a touch and it would cause many arguments and stuff so i haven't pressured my brother in any form of way but he he's finding it a little bit more difficult to adjust to the whole name change and the pronouns i do try to wear him and i do tell him and he does get corrected by different people and by myself sometimes um but i know this will be something that he would grasp over time and that is one big thing that i must say that this takes time it takes a long time it takes effort and i don't mean effort in such a way like oh this is effort i mean it in such of a way that it takes effort in in a positive way so <clears throat> So taking that bit of effort and giving people that time and I know I've given my family the time so far and they have finally come to grips with everything. So now a year later it's been so much better and people are a lot more accepting of me now, they understand it more and they're using my name and pronouns what's been really good but it, it wasn't like that at the beginning. I must say that at the beginning for the first three, four months that a lot of them didn't understand and they didn't understand why I wanted to do it and with the name change and with the pronouns and stuff and it, they found it really hard to adjust to. So it did take numerous months before that happened and that was something that was really good and I felt really good in myself. So, going from family, now we're going to go into friends. Oh, <clears throat> Friends. <laughs> so, yeah, so let's talk about friends. So, with friends, this is a bit of a hard one for me, to be honest. Because with, with friends, that has changed so much because I've lost friends during the transition. And at the beginning, they were all very much as well, don't worry, we'll support you, we'll do this, I'll come to this appointment, I'll do this appointment, and I'll be there for you, no matter what, I'm not bothered. When it started coming to reality, and once they started realising that it's not a phase, that that's where the issues started coming with a couple of friends. One of them, I was stating that I was transitioning because I wanted to have sexual intercourse with him and I wanted him and all of this stuff and so he was started saying that I'm only transitioning for him what to me is absolutely ludicrous must say that to start that off and so these and then he started kind of started commenting very much about me transition and kind of like very much at the beginning was perfectly fine and then as it came on a number of months later that the, this issue started arising um, so then he ended up stopped talking to me and then he started telling other people about that he didn't have a full issue with me transition and me wanting to be a female um, but then obviously he was going off to tell other people a different story and kind of talking about the transition and that's part of the reason why so and I had many different people coming back and telling me this very reliable people so that was kind of with one friend and then with the second friend this is where the fun comes now the second friend, she was like, yes, I love you, I'll be with you, I'll support you, I'll do this, I'll do that, and I'll do everything else for you, don't worry about it. Um, and then trying to be all nasty, nasty to my face. But then when it actually came to it behind my back, she was saying a lot of stuff about me, saying a lot of bad things about me, causing many issues and problems. So she was saying stuff like, 
she doesn't agree with it, um, she doesn't like it, she thinks it's all put on, she thinks it's a phase, she thinks it's disgusting, she thinks it's wrong, and she thinks it's all of these things, when in reality, that it's not. In reality, this is who I want to be, and in reality, this is me, no matter what. It doesn't matter what anyone says, this is me. And she started causing more and more issues for me behind closed doors. And she made a massive issue about telling people. And there was a big drama about it and it was absolutely horrendous. And we ended up stopping being friends now because we couldn't deal with it. So then she ended up making an excuse up of another incident that happened. So she used that instant as a way of going, I don't want to be your friend no more. But in reality, that wasn't the issue. The issue was more to do with the fact because I'm transgender and transitioning. Like I said, at first she thought that it was just one big phase and that I'll get over it in a few months. But as the months carried on and kept carrying on, that wasn't the case. Now people started realising actually she's not joking about no more, she's not doing it for that. Um, she did start saying to me actually that all of this is for attention um, and an attention seeking, mm -hmm. I can't swear, I'm not swearing and that really annoyed me in the, in the mind because she was stating that all of this is for attention when none of it is for attention. Let me add that into it. Um, so it was one issue after another with both of these friends. Well, ex-friends now. So those two, I actually, we all ended up cutting ends loose and we all stopped talking. Now, then now we're going on to other friends so let's flip it to a really good point i do have now three very close personal friends of mine and i tell you what i absolutely love them to the hills to the moon and back really do they've supported me they've been there for me and they have started using my name my pronouns and stuff like that and they got used to that really quick so they got used to it really quick and they really enjoyed it and they kind of very much have been there from day one and kind of supported me through every single day. Every day when I feel dysphoric, when I feel dysphoria, when I cry, when I feel like I can't do it anymore, that they are there for me no matter what. And these three friends are fantastic with me. Now I love them to pieces. Now, since coming out of transgender and since of losing friends and, get, and keeping some of my old friends still by my side, I have actually gained more friends. More friends that have been a lot more accepting. Friends that have become a big part of my life now. And one of them that I absolutely love to pieces. She is another transgender female and I started to get in nowhere over the time. And she's absolutely lovely, she's fantastic. She, we have chin wags if I've got a problem, if I've got an issue, if I feel bad about something or if I don't know something, I go to her and she helps me out and we have good chin wags. So the bonus of it, yes, I've lost friends <clears throat> and I was warned this beforehand that you're gonna lose family, you're gonna lose friends and you're gonna etc. etc. where that has happened. I've lost friends. Did that make me sad? Yes, that made me very sad. It made me very sad. I felt like I couldn't do it. I felt alone and everything. But it, in reality, it was actually very much a, a gained friends. I've got really close personal friends now and stuff. And that's been really good. And I'm really actually happy. So I didn't need them. Not as much as I thought I needed them. And I really don't. So friends and family it's been a bit of a roller coaster of a year with it because i've gained for people and i've lost people and that is something 
I hear so so much it's unbelievable but to me that is something good it's a learn it's a lesson that's learned you really see who your true friends are and who aren't your true friends and you get to figure that out over over a period of time what's really good now what my biggest advice would be where family and friends are concerned take it slow take it nice and slow don't rush into things because the moment you start rushing and the moment that you start pushing it on people that they start having a different view and they have a different idea and it can backfire and I tried to do this at the very beginning because I felt like that was necessary. I felt like that every single person needed to call me Charlotte. Every single person needed to call, say here and she. And every single person has to do this with me. And I was pushing it quite hard onto people at the beginning. But what I found by doing that was people were getting really angry and people were getting really annoyed with me. So I was getting like the opposite effect, as they say because I was pushing it on. Now, what I've learned is that I need to take time. I took a step back and took me time a little bit with it. And people had a lot more respect for me and people started understanding more because I stepped back and stopped pushing it. Like it needs to be like this and it needs to be like that and that's how it had to be. But that's not the case. So. It was hard, it was really hard at first because I started coming out to family and friends, that was really hard to do. And when I did, everybody was like, perfect, yes, we accept you. And then next minute, you find that people are not accepting as much as they say they are or how they feel. So that was quite hard to deal with. Now, the next bit I would like to hit on what really connects with family and friends is actual relationships and dates so if you've been following me for a little while now you would see that at the very beginning of the transition and stuff I had a partner so I was in a gay relationship beforehand with another male obviously a gay relationship and I was with him and he actually stayed with me for six months. So for half of this year that he did stay with me for and he stayed with me for the six months. And that became really difficult. We thought that it would be fine. We thought that we could get through it and we thought that we could, everything will be fine. But in reality, it wasn't fine. He was only ever interested in males, and that's all he was interested in, was a male only. So, obviously me coming out as transgender and me saying that I feel like a female and I want to be a woman, did have a toll, but he was very accepting, and his family was very, very accepting as well. I can't really say a bad word, at that point of time because everybody was accepting for me and they tried to help me out and give me information and along with my ex-partner he was very lovely and he was caring and he tried to support me the best way he could but they came to a point that we both have to say this is it we can't go further um, due to obviously me transitioning but I don't hate him for that side because we were in a gay relationship before we got together and we got engaged and stuff as me as a male and that's how it was now he didn't get with me as a female so that's where the complication might that's where the complication arised um, Everything was still really good, everything was still very good, but it just came to the point that we both couldn't deal or cope with the situation, what was in hand of me obviously transitioning. So we did call it an end, what was fine for both of us. Now, 
from that relationship I've been on three dates since within this past year I've been on in the past six months should I say I've been on three dates and they actually went okay now the issues that I found at dating it can be very hard the expectation was very high because when I went and met a male and when I went and met him that they didn't hear my voice beforehand and my voice is soon to become a problem that's what I was finding so when I was meeting these men on dates that uh, my voice became a problem they couldn't deal with that um, they were very nice and they were very lovely to me um, the, we went out for meals and stuff like that and it was really nice for dates as, as they say but it very turned into more very sexualized and that is something actually I'll step on that in a minute and um, it was very much going on the dates but then you're figuring out that obviously I've still got that deep voice and um, you started realizing that I haven't they started realizing that I haven't started anything yet and I will put a disclaimer here that I do tell every single person that I'm talking to or meeting that I have not started HRT or I haven't started anything as of yet. Um, so I do always pre-warn so they are fully aware but obviously when I get to them they have this expectation that I'm going to sound very female, they have an expectation that I'm going to look and everything as a biological female now that's not easy to do um, and that's hard to see over pictures and talking and stuff so when obviously I go to meet these people on these dates very, they do go good but not as good as I, I always like to think to expect so for me this is where I'm going to start talking very much into the sexualizing part of it a lot, I have a lot, a lot of messages and a lot of guys and when I have been on these dates with two of them in Pacific that it become very sexualized actor. So to me a lot of men kind of use trans women as such of a way to kind of cover their own sexuality. They start using, they have, I had one wife who actually used me to cover his own sexuality and one wife tried to basically try to figure himself out while trying to get it with me and that didn't work and that's what I found with at the moment with dating a lot of different people is that has became a big problem with it it's very they think of trans women and trans people in general that very sexualized now that is something that I didn't want I don't want the sexualization of it, if that makes sense. And to me, that was really hard because I don't, I don't want to be sexualized, and I don't want to be sexual. So when it comes to stuff like that, it becomes a little bit harder um, to actually find a decent person and find somebody who likes me for me and not for anything else, not for a sexualized purpose, not for their confusion of gender, sorry, their confusion of sexuality, and not just see me as some object. And that is something that really does wind me up and that does make me unhappy. Now, that is all I'm gonna really say about dates and stuff like that. <coughs> Yeah, that's all I'm going to really say about dates, to be honest. So, now we are going to touch on um, transphobia, the LGBTQ plus scene now. So this is actually something that is surprisingly is horrendous. This is something that really frustrates me. This is something that does anger me a lot because I have experienced more transphobia and more and more problems than anywhere else. Throughout this past year, this is where I've really 
experienced the most grief. Now this is something that really does anger me and I've actually for the past number of months now stayed out of the gay scene, stayed out of the LGBTQ plus scene now because of this, because it really has put a downer and made me sad about everything and it's made me double think about everything. And now with going into the gay scene, sorry, with going into the LGBTQ plus scene, it has been horrendous in the sense of mind because I have had people stating that I'm not transgender, I have had people stating that I am not trans, um, trans enough, should I say. I've had people comparing me to other transgender females. Um, I have had people slating my name. I've had people taking the mick out of me. I've had people um, turning around and basically saying that my makeup is rubbish. I don't wear my hair correctly. I don't wear things properly. And it's a never ending cycle. And I have many, many people who cause me problems in the gay scene and really knock my confidence down massively and it is ridiculous. Where that is supposed to be the place that I'm supposed to feel the most comfortable is and the most happiest, that's where the place I'm supposed to feel the most comfortable is and the most happiest, that is the place that has caused me a heck of a lot of grief because I don't wear makeup every single day of the week because I don't wear a wig every single day of the week that does, I have heard it a lot from different people stating I am not transgender because I don't wear makeup every day of the week and because I don't wear me wig every day of the week to me that is disgusting, that is wrong, that is something I do not agree with or because somebody does not do their makeup every day and put their wig on every single day makes them less of a transgender person. Yes, I could go on for hours about that. Um, and it's wrong. Simple as that, point blank, I don't agree with it and I don't want like it. Now, within the scene as well, it's not all been bad because I have met a few people throughout the gay scene through coming out as transgender and have wanted to walk. But the amount of grief and the amount of hate that I've had from the scene is, is horrendous. I don't agree with it and I don't like it. These are the people that have put me down consistently uh, because I don't because I don't look female enough, because my voice hasn't changed, because of stuff like the like stuff like this. And I don't think people are understanding that it's really hard to keep up with all of that type of stuff and keep up with trying to compare me to other transgender people. Now I'm going to put this out, not every single person and not every single transgender female or transgender person is the same. We all go through different stages, we all act different stages and not any of us are not all going to look the same. Don't don't categorise somebody because they are in because one transgender female was a further on in their transition compared to somebody like myself who has only been out for one year, who's only been transitioning for a year, like myself, where I'm still learning the ropes, I'm still learning absolutely everything, going down from makeup, wigs, hair, hair makeup, hair, clothing. Um, shoes, accessories, um, obviously because I'm flat chested and because I'm really skinny and I don't have no cleavage, obviously I find it hard obviously because I don't have any boobs and I'm going to put this one right out now, my biggest dysphoria is my chest, now when people, in, and a lot of people know this, that my dysphoria is my chest. I have so much dysphoria with my chest and with my face, I can't, I can't express that enough right, because that really upsets me so much, because when people know what my dysphoria is, 
And when people know that this is something that I struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis, with my face and with my chest and with my voice, I cannot cope with it. And now, when you have got people turning around and saying that, oh, you're not doing this right and you're not doing that right and you don't sound like this and you don't look like this and your makeup is rubbish and your, and your hair and your chest and all the rest of it, do you realise how much that can put somebody down? I don't agree with it in any sense. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Right. It's something I feel really passionate about and it's something that I feel really emotionally sad about. So I like to say I'm sorry. Now I'm going to go on to the next next topic, next bit. Right, let's go on to the next bit. Guys, next bit is transphobia that I get. So sorry, so sorry. And the next bit is transphobia and the transphobia that I receive outdoors. So the, I do get people giving me rubbish. I get people shouting names at me in the street and stuff like that. And that has become really hard over the past year. And I've started to get used to that even more. So I've come to the point that I've got used to where I'm at. So that actually caused a bit of an issue with going out and transitioning out outdoors. Now because I've transitioned, started trans when I started transitioning outdoors, what it was about I remember right away about 10 months ago now. So I started social transitioning very quickly. And since I social transitioned, that's where I started getting a lot of grief from. And because I couldn't cope with going outdoors every single day, dressed like this, that became more of an issue and that did become harder. So at one point I actually stopped going out like this because I was getting aware of it outdoors. And so I actually stopped. I stopped going out as trans, as trans, sorry. I'm always trans, but I stopped going out with makeup and hair on and me boobs in. Boobs in. So I did actually stop going out and I stopped presenting myself as female outdoors. I used to, I still wore all my female clothing in what we'll come into in part two is about clothing. So I was still wearing female clothing out but I was finding it really hard to actually socially transition. I was starting finding that really hard to do as we came further in and because I started losing friends at this point I started losing obviously my relationship at this point and I obviously like I just explained about the scene and all the rubbish I was going from the scene I couldn't cope with dealing with random people and the randomness outside and kind of dealing with the day-to-day -day life of issues so I actually stopped going out with makeup and hair on um, to kind of take some of that away from me. I can't believe I did stop for a teeny little bit but then I couldn't just stop anymore so that lasted about two months because I couldn't deal with the people scaring at me, the people whacking at me, the people winking at me. I couldn't deal with that anymore. And people shouting abuse at me. And that wasn't something I could just deal with. So... So that was something that I couldn't deal with, so I actually stopped for a little while. Because of my illness as well, what became excruciatingly worse, so my illness did got worse and that played in a massive effect with all of it as well. Um, so it's been a bit of a roller coaster. So I am going to wrap this video up. 
So I am going to wrap this up now to basically this past year it's been a roller coaster. There has been really good times, really bad times and times that I wish I did different. So on a whole, this first year it's been a roller coaster. So people have started accepting me a heck of a lot more now. They've accepted me being transgender. I've been accepted a lot more. People are using me pronouns, people are using me name. I've got a great support base now with friends who actually want to be my friend and people who actually want to be part of my life. On top of that, I have got family members who are really close to now and really accepting with obviously family and friends. The scene, I haven't, I've started just not going out into the scene now, not till I feel a lot more comfortable to do so. Um, so yeah, that's been, that's what's happened over this past year with family, friends, transphobia, the LGBTQ plus scene, obviously relationships and dates and etc. So that's what's happened over the past year. So stay tuned in and why not go over and watch part two, what is just going to be just as fun. So thank you very much for watching. I love you all. Mwah. So don't forget to give it a give this thumbs give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to leave a comment and tell me what you think, and tell me if you would like to know anything else, and tell me what you think of the video and stuff like that. So I want to say I appreciate all the support that I've had from all of you lovely people. Thank you very much for liking your stuff, commenting and stuff like that. I am going to leave all my social media down in the link um, in the description box of links to my, my Facebook page. I've got my Facebook page, my Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter. So I've been leaving a link in the description box of all my social media. If you would like to go over and follow me on my other social media, I would love you forever. And thank you very much for watching part one. So part two will be coming out on Wednesday. So stay tuned in and thank you very much for watching. Mwah. Bye.